come to my attention in the comments, and I've also checked myself, that the Ugreen charger that I was quite enamored with is no longer for sale. And that's quite sad. But what uh, we can do instead is take a look at a new charger that is not new at all. I've had it, it's new to you seeing it on the video here if you've not seen it before. But I've had this for now for about a year. And after seeing that the Ugreen is no longer available, I'll do a video on a charger that I'm using that I feel is, is pretty good and isn't terribly expensive. I think right now it's about $23 with eight rechargeable batteries and you can pick what combos you want. But this is it. This is the Tenergy rechargeable battery combo with the Tenergy AA nickel metal hydride batteries eight of them in this particular combo, and the TN480U charger. This charger features 500 milliamp fast charging. We'll check that out. Eight individual charging bays, a detailed LCD display, which is actually a pretty cool little display. It is USB powered by either USB-C or micro USB, which is pretty awesome. and has advanced protections with a shield and a plus sign, which we'll get into that in a bit. In the box, this is 11 months after I've gotten this thing. So uh, here's where all the batteries were. They're not there anymore. These are the batteries. I've got two of them on the desk, but the rest are being used and stuff. And here is the micro USB to a charging lead. It comes in a nice little bubble wrap thing to keep, keep it protected. To not waste any time, I've just taken the whole thing apart. So let's go through what it has. Basically, it is a some hot glue stuck to the yeah, stuck to the manual there. It monitors all the cells individually, has slots for AA and AAA, and you can power it, like I said, from USB-C or micro USB. The cool thing is that it also has a, a cool charging status indicator, which we'll, I'll show in a moment, and it allows you to see which batteries individually have issues which would cause it to err and it will specifically illuminate those particular cells bays so you can troubleshoot those cells and not have to go through trial and error to figure out which one of the cells that was one of the main frustrations i had with the ikea charger was that i had one light and if the light went and started blinking red you just would you wouldn't know which cell would have caused it unless you only had one battery in there charging uh, you'd have to go and, um, and hunt around to find which cell was causing the issue this, you won't have that problem. It will tell you and it will give you the error indication and you can see the, the cell flashing, which I'll demonstrate in a bit. As far as features, when it was talking about the advanced protections, it does use negative delta V cutoff for charging. So when it sees the voltage hit a peak and then it starts to drop off of that peak, then it knows that the cell's fully charged and it will stop charging. It also has a safety timer. So if the cell does not ever hit that peak and is act and funky, it won't just keep charging it forever, it will stop. It also has reverse polarity, bad cell, and short circuit protection built in. What it does not have, which I would have liked to have seen, but obviously it hasn't prevented me from using it, is it does not have any thermal protection. So it doesn't have any temperature sensing on it, which would cause it to cut out if a particular cell were to get too warm. That said, this is charging at 500 milliamps, as it says, or 250 milliamps if you're charging with AAA, it isn't really that fast of charging, so I wouldn't expect there to be any significant buildup of heat. When I've used this, I haven't appreciated that, even with cells that are at very low voltages. It's not a thing that I'm really concerned about. Now, compared to chargers like the LaCrosse technology, the standby, the BC1000 that I always go back to, like this, this charger where you can charge it at 1.5 amp or 1.8 amp, this will go up to quite high charge current. And so that would be something that you'd want to see temperature monitoring, which it has in this, this little well here. This doesn't have that, but again, it's much lower current than this. I'll show the display now. I think I can kind of fit this back in uh, without putting all the screws back in because that would be a bit of a pain. It's on a silicone mat now. I'm not going to bother putting the back on. Actually, I will because it's... <laughs> I like how I say things that I'm not going to do, and then I do them because it's, it's popping apart. So... Hope I don't need to put screws in there. We'll just snap it in place. There we go. I'll need to tip this thing backward because that's just the way the LCD has been designed for the angle of view. But when you use it normally, you're going to be looking at it 
off angle, not like the camera is looking at it, so it will look just fine. I'll zoom in here so we can get a little better view of it, but it's a pretty good looking display, uh, LCD display, it's just that the angle of view has been set for you looking at it off access with it sitting on a desk, not looking directly down at it. Here it is just powered on, the backlight comes on, it's not really doing anything. And if I put some batteries in it, I'm just gonna put the Tenergy cells and whatever else I got here on the desk, some Lada's. Uh, a Tenergy Premium Pro, that's not all the way in. And then uh, another EBL for, to round things out. So if you wanna know how these cells fare, I'm not testing them in this video, but it, these Tenergy cells of a Tenergy Premium Pros will be tested in a separate video, so get subscribed if you wanna know when those videos come out. So here you can see I've got cells that are at varying levels of charge. Actually, I'm looking at the viewfinder and it doesn't look super mega bright there. If I angle it further back, that's probably more representative. But now I'm leaning on the USB-C cable, but uh, it's bright enough to see it without like coming up really close to it. So that's that's a pretty good representation of what it looks like. Now you can see I've powered it on and it already is detecting at these cells, these Ikea, oh, these Ikea cells and this, this EBL cell, and this, uh, this EBL cell here, these are already fully charged. Actually, all of these are fully charged. The only ones that are not are the, uh, the Tenergy cells. And it's showing already four bars out of five. So it pretty quickly detects when the cells are pretty close to charge, which is really nice if you're just trying to check to see if cells are charged. If you put a cell in here and it's hanging around just one bar for a really long period of time, you know, like five or 10 minutes, and you know it's the cell needs to be fully charged. But if you put it in there and within a minute or two, or less than a minute in this case, it's getting close to, you know, four bars out of five, you know, okay, the, the cell's pretty fully charged, if not fully charged. It's pretty cool. It kind of reminds me of one of those little individual cell testers with a little analog gauge that slightly loaded the cell and would give you an indication of its uh, charge level. How accurate are these bar graphs? I don't know. They're not they're not particularly accurate, but it does give you a, an indication of, hey, it's very drained, it's midway through charging, and it's close to finished charging. And there's other manufacturers that have made chargers with varying indications of the state of charge based on either just changing the color of an LED or the changing the rate at which an LED blinks, that sort of stuff. So this isn't new tech, it's just, it's nice to have it represented in this way. Now, if there is an error, if there's an issue with a cell, so I'm gonna short out one of the bays, which will represent a bad cell. So I'll pull out one of these Tenergy cells, and then I'm just gonna short out a bay. Now remember, it's applying a voltage of about three volts right now, and that gets pulled down by the battery as it charges. So if I I'm just trying to short this out. So this is gonna start running. It's gonna to try to charge. It has restarted. Oop, I'm gonna be able to get the display on there so you can see what's going on. Let me see the display. Oh, no, my finger's right in the way. Let's do this. Okay, so it'll go for a few seconds and then it should air out and then you'll see that it will indicate which bay has the air. It's trying to charge, air, and then now it's flashing that bay and saying, air. So you don't have to hunt around and figure out which cell it is and which bay you'll know exactly which one it is. And then if I remove that, it'll go back to just charging. It doesn't stop charging the other cells, it just gives you an error indication, and then you can pull that cell out and it'll go back and showing, showing that it's charging. So it hasn't stopped charging the other cells, it just doesn't charge that particular bay. When it finishes, it has another light on this side that says, what does it say? Finish, there it is right there. And that's how you know the cells are done. And then that only illuminates when, when all the cells and all the bays have finished charging. It shows charging times here. They have two different ratings. They have, if you use a power source with a one amp current rating versus a two amp current rating, it's showing that if you go up to one to four cells, it will run at one amp at five volts, but it, it will slow down charging if you put more than four cells in the charger for, Triple A's, it's the same. It's a lower charging current regardless, so it won't affect the charging time. But I would just say use it with a use it with a two amp or higher charging port or a USB charger. All right, that's how it works. So now we're gonna open it up. There's these little feet on the bottom. I removed all of those little feet. And then what meets you after you remove those feet are the weirdest screws I've seen. They are a weird slotted screw head like that. And I have a Pro Kit SD2310 and it's that bit there. 
It's the four. I don't know. I'll put it down in the bottom as to what it is. But yeah, that bit fits and I got all the, the screws out. Never seen it before. That's that's a new one, so interesting. The whole enclosure is ABS plastic. If I pull this board out, I gotta be careful because I do have the one screw on the display board. I noticed a couple of things that surprised me. One is that there is this DC input. It says DC and ground. And when I'm like flipped it around, I'm like, why would this be here? Surely they would be there would be the micro USB and the USB C soldered right to the main board. Well, no, it's not. So let me get the screw out of here and I'll show you that it's not. It is actually sitting on a daughter board. Oops, it's not really a daughter board, I guess, but technically you can see it's soldered directly to this tin copper pad there on each side that's just open for whatever modular connections they want to use. So I guess it could be only micro USB, only USB-C, just a barrel jack or who knows, it could be any combination to create this. And the other thing that was just kind of interesting about this design is that this display seems like it's optional because if you look, flip this back, there is a silk screens and plated through holes for eight LEDs. Coming off this supply here, there's some configuration resistors. I'm not sure if that's used for micro USB or for USB-C or they're sharing them. Looks like there's a little bit of <laughs> A capacitor here. There's one that says CB and CC. So I'm, my guess is it's one for a, st a little stability and noise rejection capacitor for the USB micro B. And this is for the USB micro C. Anyways, it's just kind of cute that there's a R A R B C B C C and nothing populated in CA. This just goes to the flip side of the board. And then you have all through here is, is all of the set up for your switching components. It's a pretty densely populated board. A lot of things being duplicated because there's obviously eight channels, but all through here, you got quite a bit going on with a dedicated microcontroller that is handling charging. And then also it does provide signaling to the LCD. And then there's a LCD controller that multiplexes all of the segments on the LCD and handles all of that stuff. They do seem to be, to be the same package. They're marked different things. This one says TM or TIA TM1621 with a bunch of numbers under it. And this one is SOC SO92F7446 something something with a bunch of numbers beneath it. My, I'm, I'm guessing they're both either ASICs or uh, microcontrollers that are programmed for the display and programmed for the charge controlling. I was curious about seeing two inductors on here, which basically leads me to believe that there's two buck converters running on this board. So it might be two four bay charger electronics combined together, but at least it's on one circuit board and not two boards just jammed together with some bodge wires in between. If we look here, there's ball capacitance here and and then there's two capacitors here and here so i feel like one is just basically for again ball capacitance there's a big fat trace coming off of here from the this is the positive yep this is the five volt rail and it comes up to here there's a negative and then the positive is on the, is on the flip side i think and then you've got these two and then this inductor and then these two and then this inductor so interesting, flip to the back. There is only one switcher, which is interesting. So I'm wondering if it's just running these both in parallel to be able to support the amount of power that's needed here. So this is an EST LM358S. That may not be correct. We need to double check that. But this just does look like the switching controller and it might be controlling the two, the two halves here, which look just by, um, not doing full reverse engineering here, but I'm looking at this this section here of the board and this section here of the board, and they do look like, like they're mirrored images of each other. And so you have one controller, one a buck controller, and it's driving both of these. Perhaps that's all that's needed because I don't see another chip that would be independently controlling these, unless this does have a facility for multi-channel driving circuitry. So there's individual switching for each of the bays. You can see these groupings of four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's one for each channel. And then down here at the bottom, 
there does seem to be some resistance between each of the, uh, the negative terminals for the AA and the AAA cell. So they are separated from each other. So I do feel like that allows for it to detect whether or not a AAA cell is in there and it will modulate the current based on that. And this is a nice thing to see because way back when I did the review on the Power Owl, this was one piece of metal. There was one loop going down and then back up again. That was both the terminal for the, the negative terminal for the AAA battery and the negative terminal for the AA battery. And both the, the AAA and the AA were receiving 2.2 amps sunk into it, which is not great for AAA batteries. It's just not rated for that amount of current. This is a pretty good construction. I guess the only thing left to check is to see if it is in fact handling charging current in a way that is not dumping a bunch of current to the batteries. I just have a feeling it's not gonna be the 500 milliamps they're saying. Maybe that's what all the cell bays you know, loaded down. I feel like it's probably gonna be something a little higher than that. It's gonna ramp up and down from there. It's just my, just a guess. So I'm gonna put some cells in here. We'll get, we'll get it charging. All I'm gonna do is measure the current with a amp clamp and a loop to see what the current is across these cells when they're charging. So I'm just gonna put the top front of the cell there and then put the wire on the back of it. Yeah, so as I suspected, it's, ram it's ramping up to around one amp with four cells in it. So you can see it kind of going up and down. It kind of, it's interesting, it kind of ramps up and down. Now it's freaking out. I'm, yeah, I'm angering it with, with this being injected into the, the circuit. So there's not an issue with the cells or anything like that. So about one amp, I think what I'll do. Oh, uh, look at that. So if it's loaded up with more cells, it definitely slows down. It goes to about a half an amp, like it claims. It's not climbing over a half an amp. This is with five cells. I mean, it has six cells, but one got disconnected. One to four cells, it will pull about an amp. Five to eight cells, it will ramp back down to about 500 milliamp. One last test I wanna do, and then we'll wrap this up, is just this AAA cell. I'm gonna put the AAA cell in and measure it off of the AAA cell pad and see if it is not one amp, hopefully. Yeah, it is doing one amp, but it's at a much slower rate. You can see it on the, there it is again, coming on, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.9, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.9. Yeah, it's hitting one amp every so often. So I feel like it's one amp max that it's hitting on these, but that's okay, that's okay. I prefer to see it current limited to what it says it's current limited to, which it says AAAs are 250 milliamp and double A's are 500 milliamp, but it's not hitting it at two amps or 2.2 amps like the old Power Owl. And these cells, I've charged many AAA cells in here and I've, they've not gotten hot. And I also have to add in that the way of measuring the current, it's not a high enough uh, frequency sample to kind of get an idea of what the actual average current is across the cell. That I might do in another video, but that's it for now. This is this is a good charger. I mean, it's not the best charger that's out there, but it is one that is quite good for the price. Even these Tenergy, standard Tenergy cells that are rated 2.5 amp hour, they're, they're pretty good. I've used them for a year and I haven't had any issues with them. I don't think that they are a Tenergy brand. I'm not sure that there is such a thing when it comes to nickel metal hydride cells. There are fewer and fewer manufacturers out there right now. These uh, very well might be a white label from another manufacturer. But that being said, these and the Tenergy Premium Pros work quite well. The things I don't use them in is the things that really need the absolute lowest self-discharge. So, but for everything else, they work very well. That is the, where did the box go? I threw it on the floor. Tenergy rechargeable battery combo. It does everything it says. It didn't claim to have features that we opened it up and found that it didn't have. Everything works as expected and it's a pretty honest charger. That's what I'd like to see. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do and I will see you in the next one. Take care.